Hey, this is Dr. Barry. Let's discuss in this video some medications that can actually lead to or worsen depression. So many people have improved their depression, some people even enough to get off their medication with the ketogenic way of eating. And I wanted to go over a few medications that you may be taking that you're not even aware that can increase your risk of having depression or having a worsening depression if you already suffer from it. So let's talk about this for a second. And if you know someone who's had depression, has depression, or is afraid they'll get depression, please consider sharing this video with them. You can share it on your personal Facebook page or in your groups. I always welcome you doing that because it helps me to help so many other people. Now, let's talk about this. There are multiple drug classes out there that can lead to depression or can worsen an already existing depression. And so many doctors aren't aware of this. Nurse practitioners, PAs, nurse midwives, they just don't know this stuff because there's so many drugs out there now. We can't keep up with the side effects from all of them. Some of us have electronic medical records or electronic health records. I kind of hate calling it a health record because it's really not, it doesn't promote health, but it does uh, electronically record the medical records. So that's what I call it. Some of those will pop up and give us a warning, hey, that it might lead to these side effects, but so many medications can cause hundreds of possible side effects that it, it takes too much time to read all that. And so let's go through this list, and you can, uh, you can match this list against your medications if you currently take any. I hope you're slowly but surely decreasing the amount of medication you take. But if one of these is on your list, here's what I want you to do and what I want you to not do. First, I want you to go see your doctor or your provider and say, hey, I saw this crazy doctor on YouTube. He said that this medication might actually worsen, worsen my depression. Is there another alternative? That's what I want you to do. What I don't want you to do is to stop taking your medication without consulting your healthcare provider, okay? This video is not medical advice. I'm not telling you to do anything. I'm giving you this for information so that you can do more research and you can go talk to your doctor and figure out what you guys as a team want to do about this possible cause of depression. Okay, let's dive into this and let's talk about this. So for, I'm going to go through the drugs kind of in classes so that we can kind of keep them all grouped together. The first um, class is the cardiovascular drugs. These are drugs that are, that are for heart health to help with heart failure, blood pressure, cholesterol, all those things that we associate with heart, heart disease. Clonidine can increase depression. This has been known for years. It's actually not a medication that should be used very often for uh, hypertension at all these days. Methyl dopa, also a very old uh, blood pressure medication. There's probably better alternatives out there. Here's a very common one, the thiazide diuretics. And so if you're taking anything that has the uh, initials HCTZ or HCT, uh, that's a thiazide. So any of those, hydrochlorothiazide or the other thiazide diuretics, they can increase your risk of having a depression or worsening an existing depression. Another is all of the beta blockers. And so if your blood pressure or heart medication, or you might take this for tremor or migraine prevention, if it ends in LOL, LOL, uh, atenolol, labetalol, any of the alls, those are beta blockers. And so if you also have depression, you might want to go talk to your doc and say, hey, is there another medication for my blood pressure or my heart failure or my tremor or to prevent migraines that I can take that is not a beta blocker because I think it's making my depression worse. Another class of drugs, which I have talked about many times, are the statins. Your brain absolutely needs cholesterol and fatty acids in order to function properly. One of the many ways it can misfunction is if you're if you're blocking too much cholesterol with a statin drug. So go talk to your doc and say, is it really worth the risk of low testosterone, depression, and all the other things that a statin can cause? Is it really helping me that much? Go have that conversation with your doctor and he might switch you off that or he, he might, if nothing else, you might help wake him up a little bit. Another class of drugs that can lead to depression are the benzodiazepines. And this is Ativan, Valium, Xanax, uh, Clonopin, and there's several others in this class. They're for anxiety. They're for panic attacks. And really, they were never intended for long-term use. They were intended if you had a terrible loss in the family or if you ha have an occasional panic attack. But 
taking the benzodiazepines every single day can certainly make you irritable and or depressed. So go talk to your doctor about weaning those down very slowly and maybe trying something else if you still think you need a pill for your anxiety. Another huge class of drugs that many of us take every single day are the NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. This includes Mobic, this includes uh, Relafin, this includes Celebrex, and then all of the -the over-the-counter anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen, Advil, naproxen, Aleve, Motrin, all those guys have as one of their many side effects possible depression. And so if you're taking an NSAID just rarely every now and then, it's not going to cause depression. Okay, don't worry about that. But if you're taking an anti-inflammatory, an NSAID every single day, that's something you got to consider. And there are many other side effects that you can get from taking them every day. Uh, I would much rather you decrease the inflammation in your joints by changing your diet than by just thoughtlessly taking a Mobic or a Celebrex or an Advil every single day. That's probably not a wise idea. There are a few antibiotics, which are for bacterial infections. That have been shown in a few case studies. They might provoke a depression. The two most common are ampicillin and flagyl or metronidazole. Uh, You're probably not going to take them long enough for them to have this effect. And I know that your doctor is only going to give you these antibiotics if you truly have a bacterial infection. And so you're probably going to be taking them very, very rarely because I know your doctor would never give these to you for a viral infection. Another big class that so many of us take every single day are the proton pump pump inhibitors like Nexium, uh, Prevacid, uh, all the others in that class. Those guys are not okay to take every single day. They lead to a host of potential serious long-term side effects, one of which is depression. We're not sure of the mechanism that they they can worsen depression, but they certainly can. Uh, The H2 blockers as well, like Pepsid, Zantac, uh, ranitidine, Pepsid, all those guys will also have this risk of possible depression. Two other stomach drugs are Reglan and Bentol. And a lot of people take these every single day to keep their gut issues at bay. And that's, a, that's probably okay if you're not having any depression symptoms. But if you're also depressed, you might want to talk to your doc about switching off to something else. The uh, next, Another big class is the chemotherapeutic agents. So chemotherapy drugs, all of them has have depression as a possible side effect. If you're on a certain chemotherapeutic regimen, I mean, you're kind of stuck with that. But just know that, you know, first of all, having cancer or the autoimmune condition that you have that you're getting these chemotherapeutic drugs for is kind of depressing to start with. But if you're having more depression over and above that, you might talk to your oncologist or your rheumatologist about trying another regimen just a thought. Another big class is the anticonvulsants. These are medications that are used for seizure disorders or tremor disorders. And so the this list, this is the most common ones that you might be on or might have heard of. Tegretol, Zerotin, Dilantin, Phenobarbital, and Mycelin. Okay, the first four are for seizure disorders of various different types. Mycelin is an anti-seizure, but it can also be used for essential tremor. And so if you're taking any of those drugs and, and you also have symptoms of depression, you might want to talk to your doc about trying something else. Any of the class of medications that affect your hormones can also lead to depression. So the oral contraceptive pills, the birth control pill, for some people, there, it has no effect on their mood. For other people, it can cause anxiety or depression. Also, any of the corticosteroids, so Medrol, uh, prednisone, prednisolone, any of those, if you take those chronically, they can make you depressed. Now, you might take a short-term taper of the corticosteroids, and you might feel kind of down while you're taking it, but that should go away as soon as you're done with that tapering dose over a few days. But if you have to take them long term and you also have depression, you might want to talk to your doc about that. Some psychiatric drugs can also lead to quite severe depression. Lithium can do this. Prolixin can do this. And also Haldol can do this. And so if you have a psychiatric condition, you take one of these four and you also have depression symptoms, you might want to talk to your psychiatrist or your primary care provider about, let's try something else to see if my depression gets better. Parkinson's drugs is the next big class. They absolutely can have some pretty severe depression side effects. Parladel, 
uh, levodopa and amantadine have all been shown to increase your risk of getting depression or worsening an existing depression. And so if you take any of those for Parkinson's, there might not be another option, but still I think it'd be wise to talk to your doc and say, hey, I'm kind of, I'm depressed as well. Do you think this medicine is causing that? Now, so let me reiterate one more time. If you're currently on any of these medications and you also have signs and symptoms of depression, do not stop taking your medication until you see your doctor. Go see your doctor and and have a conversation. He may say, yeah, it might be doing that, but the risk of you coming off this medication is too high. You need to stay on this. Or he may say, "Mm, good point. Let's try another drug in a different class and see if it has the same beneficial effects without the depression side effects. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see others like it, I have over 200 videos on this channel that you can watch at your leisure for free. You can also click the little subscribe button and the little bell right beside it so that every time I post a new video, you'll be one of the very first people to know. And then if you'd like to help me have more time to make more videos just like this, you can click on my Patreon link. It's right down there. It's a quick sign up. You can throw a buck or two my way and it just gives me more time to have to make videos like this for you because I love you. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.